And welcome aboard the Harris Val. Right now we're cruising the inland waters of Atlantic City with the cast of Catskills on Broadway currently appearing at Harris through August 29th. And when we come back, we'll be talking with Freddie Roman, Malzi Lawrence, Dick Capri, and Louise Duard. All that and more when the David Spatz Show continues from the Harris Bell right after this. And long John Silver. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome back to the David's Best Show. We're on board the Harris Bell, cruising the inland waters behind Atlantic City. Uh, we don't take the boat out into the ocean because um, one of my guests might lose it. Um, the four people who are flanked, well, not even flanked, they're standing here to my right, your left, uh, in order. Freddie Roman, you can look at the camera. There we go. Hi. Freddie Roman, <laughs> Dick Capri, Louise Duart, and Mal Z. Hi, how are you doing that? <laughs> they are the cast of Catskills on Broadway currently appearing at Harris and uh, I want to start with you first Freddie the show was created what, about 18 months ago actually 21 months 21 ago. months ago right uh, launched in New York amid a little bit of um, criticism from some people who say even before you went you know public with it that how could the show possibly work you've got four people who are basically known as opening acts and they dare violate the sanctity of Broadway but you had a feeling that this show was going to work yeah, once Jackie Mason opened on Broadway and proved that there was a market for stand-up comedy on Broadway, I said, well, if he did it, why couldn't four people do it uh, and, and get a similar reaction? And uh, so we put the show together. We opened on November 19th. The reviews were incredible. And we stayed 14 months, which is longer than Mason stayed on Broadway. That's right. He was there for a year. And we right? were in a theater that was twice as big, so we, we really... We were in the top 10% of every show that's ever opened on Broadway. We did 471 performances, which was more than 90% of the of the shows in the history of Broadway. So it was very gratifying. And now we've been on the road with it for five months, and we settled into Harris for the whole summer. And uh, we've been here now a week, nine days, and it's amazing. We haven't had an empty seat. The audiences are loving it, and we're loving it. And I'm having a very bad hair day on this boat. <laughs> we all are. We, we all are. At least, at least you have I hair. I love my hair. Yeah. I love Dick, my hair. Dick like and Mousy love their hair. Sure, the other three guys on this show, ladies and gentlemen, Spats, Capri, and Lawrence, they don't care if the wind blows. There is no wind in my hair. I had transplants. They're all here. My hair. This is going to be one of those shows where I don't have to say a word. They'll That's just, right. You know. Thank you for coming, David. We'll take <laughs> over from okay, here. I'll my just hair is the wind the beneath my right. sails. Let me get rid of David. <laughs> Freddie, let me ask you, why the Catskills angle? Why the name Catskills on Broadway? Well, actually, in the, the history of stand-up comedy in America, the great preponderance of it was preponderance. preponderance. I like that. <laughs> NYU class of 1958. That's almost as good as Kamasakyama. <laughs> For our Italian friends in the audience. Uh, the Catskills is where the, the great amount of stand-up really started. Uh, for example, Danny Kaye, Sid Caesar, Alan King, Mel Brooks, Buddy Hackett, Jackie Mason, Jan Murray. The roots of so much of America's stand-up comedy was the Catskills, and I just felt that was the hook to put it on because uh, uh, people hear Catskills, Catskills was known for two things, food and entertainment. And so we took care of the entertainment, and Mal's routine takes care of the food. <laughs> but, but, but a lot of people came to know the Catskills as Jewish entertainment, but the show is not just a Jewish show, oh, no. right? We're like Levy's Rye Bread. You don't have to be Jewish to enjoy Catskills on Broadway, which is what Liz Smith said in her review. Because uh, on Broadway, naturally, we had a... Uh, 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 a great... Uh, preponderance. Preponderance. <laughs> Diversity. Diversity was yeah. the word, thank you. Uh, uh, w people, and here at Harris in particular, uh, whoever comes to see the show, and we've, we have 1,700 people a night coming to see it, are loving it, and ethnically, it, it, the show plays anywhere we've ever worked with it. Well, Dick, let me ask you. you, you Freddie said everything yeah, possibly, and I have I nothing to else to say. It's wonderful, so this is just going to be a cruise this to is nowhere. Gonna, that'll be he it. just <laughs> likes to take <laughs> ships. He's single. He heard there's girls on ships. <laughs> well, he's standing next to a, a rather attractive and one. he's fun. Hey, me. this is a nice guy over here. It's been I'm so long. This is a real guy. <laughs> now, Dick, you, you have done a lot of work up in the Catskills over the years, so obviously you are not... You're not Jewish, you were of Italian right. extraction. It's not just, uh, the Catskills are not just for Jewish people, it's for Absolutely all Absolutely not. I've been working on the Catskills since the uh, early 70s. Since, since Rick Van Winkle showed up. 
<laughs> I've been working, and I, I worked every ethnic group up there, Jews, Italians, uh, firemen, anything. And, uh, <laughs> There's a new ethnic group. New ethnic group. Firemen. 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 But they just they just own the fire. You house, do, right? but we own the hose. <laughs> okay, we own the insurance company. All right, all right, Malzi, you um, yes, yes, yes. You want to do Dave? your Captain Hook impression, please? Go ahead. I don't have to do Captain Hook. I take this every every day at four o'clock. I get on this boat. As he's a stowaway, he's not even it. supposed to be here. I don't even pay for it. Dick, uh, Dick, Dick. Malzi, on, yes. on stage. Yes. You are one of the uh, of the cast. You are the one who does. Atlantic City humor. Yes. This is something you have changed for the show, right? You couldn't have done your your bus people and and and, and slot machine jokes uh, in Miami, could you? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, really? You're wrong, oh, there, David. Yeah. Oh. I do the slot machine. I do Atlantic City. I did Atlantic City in Vegas. And it worked. Not only did it work, they loved it. They cleared the room. They, they absolutely loved it. No, they, the they did. Routine, no, they, the routine. They know about the routine. Goes they, know everywhere. What, they know what happens. The routine works <laughs> everywhere. His routine works everywhere. It's and funny as funny. And his routine. About any... And my routine works, works good, also. too. Funny. No, the, the routine works everywhere. The routine is funny. It has nothing to do with uh, Atlantic City. <laughs> where you City. do it. If it's, it's a funny the routine, routine, it's a funny that's, routine. That's correct. Dick, I Absolutely. see that you have your, your right arm around Louise's uh, shoulder, but I don't see your left hand at all. <laughs> <laughs> you got it around it's, it's around, around Freddy's, around Freddy's Freddy. behind. Freddy. Yeah, I don't know about Louise, Louise, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, you um, joined the cast of Catskills on Broadway in, was it last July, July of 92? Yes. Replacing Marilyn Michaels. Right, right. That was your first experience on, on Broadway. Broadway stage. Was that something that, that you would look forward yeah. to um, as your career developed, or was this something that just came upon you as a surprise? No, I always wanted to work Broadway, but I didn't know how And Marilyn Michaels there. didn't, and so Marilyn's that's how it worked out. It's perfect timing. <laughs> Don't worry, Marilyn doesn't get cable. I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> oh. Well, we talked about the this before. The expressed on the show are not necessarily those of me. <laughs> we talked about right. right before I went on Broadway. Right. Because you, I think I called you first when I got, uh, got the call to you do call, it. First you called your shrink and said, what am I going to do? Yeah, and then right, you called me. Right. Um, then she what, called Barry. Yeah, which, then my divorce lawyer. And then the rest <laughs> is history. <laughs> what was it like? Now, how many, had any of you appeared on Broadway? Uh, I, I did, I think you did. I, did, I, did, I appeared with, uh, well, I was with Engelbert, Engelbert right. work, and I was opening for Engelbert, so I did Radio City with him, I did a Minskoff Theater mm -hmm. with him, but I was the opening act. Being on Broadway is an opening act, it's like being Zippy the Chimp. <laughs> you know, you could just be Zippy with the, you know, with, a, with the walk in the typo with the umbrella, mm -hmm. you know, so it doesn't mean anything. But now, when we're on Broadway, my name is on the marquee, and I'm not Zippy anymore. <laughs> marquee <laughs> Chimp. I'm <laughs> Jumbo the <laughs> Elephant. <laughs> What did that mean to you, Dick? After all the years you've been in the business, and, and you, Mally, and Freddie, yes. what did that mean? All of a sudden, your name is up on the marquee of a Broadway theater. Well, it finally came down to my money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's silly because... Uh, I know, I'm joking, Freddie. You no, know what I mean? The He's a joke. The man asked the, the serious paycheck. question, and I can't stand comedians that don't have a regular self to them. <laughs> okay. what I say? Ask me that again. No. All right. What did Broadway mean to you? I, 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 I've done better. Besides, besides a steady job. Besides. It was fabulous to be on Broadway. There is nothing better than Broadway. The best part was going out to dinner afterwards. And we had the Zagat guide, you know. So we, I think, got up to the Z and Z. No, we, <laughs> we, ate, we ate in every night. Every restaurant every, 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 in New every York but we you, ate in. You want to know what it was when you all of a sudden, now all of us have made a wonderful living in this business for a lot of years. But all of a sudden now, you're appearing in a theater across the street is Richard uh, Dreyfus and Gene Hackman and Glenn Close. Around the corner is uh, uh, Keith Carradine and, and every major star was on Gregory man. Hines. And you didn't like. <laughs> that and, was Keith you're, Carradine, you're ladies are, and gentlemen. You, we are the equals. We go into the restaurant, There's we see like Keith. It. We see any other stars in there, they treat us like equals. Alec it's, it's, Baldwin, it's, Jessica Lange tried to sleep with me twice. <laughs> no, wait, and I, I wasn't home, but I heard about it. I said it. to Glenn Close, not so close, please. <laughs> I'm a star on Broadway. This is going into the act tonight. Um, a, a thought just, just occurred to me. You have worked, all of you collectively, probably 100 years in the business, and you finally make it to Broadway. And then all of a sudden, Marla Maples is on Broadway. Does huh. that cheapen it all? Or what? No, no, Marla. No, we loved her on Broadway. Marla was great. She did a cartwheel like had never been seen before, <laughs> except she, for Molly Pecan. And she did Molly a place K.D. Huffman, who yes. was the uh, original poster girl on uh, In Follies. And she did a very good job, Marla Maples. Marla really? was great. You know, was Marla hung out with us. 
Oh, she did. She came. She we, was excellent. Absolutely, Marla. Marla's a delightful lady. Absolutely. Louise wants to get a word. Go ahead. Well, all, a lot of the stars that were appearing on Broadway came to see our show. Right. And there was, a, I remember one night East, when was it Easter weekend? Easter Sunday. It was, yes, Easter Sunday. Because Easter Sunday. We, since it was. Well, it first was, night of Passover. Was, kind it was of first night of Passover. Yeah. No, well, what happened was we, we had canceled the two shows on these Seder nights right. because of a great proportion of the audience that came to see us was Fun. Jewish. So we added a, sec a second show on Sunday, and the public it just never got out to the public. So rather than work for 100 people, we invited the cast of every show on Broadway to come. And that was one of the most exciting most nights. They all nights. showed up. And Everyone. they came in the, and they green, came back room to the green room, right. and it was so bizarre because here you have Glenn Close and Gene Hackman, you know, and they're saying Brenda Vaccaro, all of Jake's women, the cast. Of the she actually Red introduced Grave. herself. She said, "I'm Glenn Lynn Close." Redgrave. I said, "Thank Lynn God Redgrave you're not in the bathtub." <laughs> yeah, Vanessa Redgrave, we didn't want. No, she Lynn wasn't there. Lynn Redgrave was there. Lynn 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 she was doing Shakespeare for her father. I mean, it was just very gratifying because now, all of a sudden, instead of being the opening act for whoever we were. We became principals on Broadway, and then we got invited to all these wonderful parties and charity events. We had a wonderful time. Yeah. Florida used to be a southern state no more. It's now a suburb of Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, Long Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, and anywhere cold. What happened to Florida? Nice, normal people from the north got older and colder. They said, we're going to Florida. And the exodus began down I-95. Covered wagons with mink coats flying. <laughs> these nice, normal people got to Florida. Something happened to them. They became wackos. <laughs> for example, the whole state of Florida goes out for dinner three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> the early bird special. The state bird of Florida is the early bird. <laughs> and why do they go for the early bird? Because my people are smart. We are not gonna spend five dollars more for the same piece of chicken just cause it's darker. <laughs> Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you know working the Catskills for so many years and, and being in this show, to tell you the truth, I'm getting to feel very, very Jewish. It's gonna rub off on me. Had some kosher wine for dinner. Vintage kosher wine. Was 47, 25 a good year? I wrote a Yiddish soap opera called All My Children Are Too Busy to Call Me. I go for a haircut, I do it fast. I go on the express line, 10 hairs or less. Zip, right out again. <laughs> barbers, I wise guy barbers. I go to the shop, he says, how do you want me to part your hair? I said, part it in the middle. He's okay, but I'll have to pull one out. You've got 11. <laughs> All right, when you started to put the show together, um, why did you pick Dick, and why did you pick Mousy? And I won't ask you why you picked Marilyn, because that's a moot point. Uh, but why those two, of, of all the people, and I know, I know they're your friends, but well, like it's gotta be, go beyond friendship. Absolutely, I mean, I, I could have picked uh, uh, you know, friends that wouldn't have worked out well in the show, but I knew, having known them both for 30 years, what they do on stage, which is brilliant, and knowing that Mousy, Dick, and I, there's absolutely no conflict at all. We all work differently, our material is different, and it just blended so perfectly. I did want a woman on the show, that's why I chose Marilyn at the time. And Marilyn is a wonderfully talented young lady. She had some problems, it's called her mind. <laughs> but other than that, she was great. And then when Louise came, the chemistry with the four of us is so strong. Right, how did Louise, how did you come to... to uh, well, I had met Louise me? 10 years ago, she was just starting out at the Comedy Store in the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas. And I did a radio show with her, a fellow named Joe Delaney right. in Vegas. And then time passed by and I didn't know, see her again, but then I saw her Showtime television special, which I fell in love with. Married again. Yes, she's going to marry Yoko Ono. She'll be known as Yoko Ono Bono! Oh, gosh! I'm killing myself. Uh, <laughs> hey, Rita, go over there and do Kate Hepburn. Yeah, what do you say, people? <laughs> Definitely a good wig. 
I remember when I was up for the part of Dorothy of the Wizard of Oz. What a wonderful little part it was. If ever a wonderful part there was. I love the ruby slippers, but I hated that freaking dog. Boo, boo, doo, doo, poo, poo, whatever the hell his name was. He kept peeing That is the miracle story of all time. We go to Sardi's after the show one night, and Louise and her husband had come to see the show that night. And there she was in Sardi's. I sent over a drink. And Marilyn Michaels was taking a week's vacation in two weeks. I asked her if she'd like to do it. She did it. Then when Marilyn left the show at the end of June, boom, it was magic. Because the week she Absolutely. did it in vacation was perfect. Best thing that ever happened to Catskills on Broadway. That's correct. That's Except true. for the guy that put up the million. Oh, no. <laughs> they were the your most money, wonderful huh? men. No, it wasn't that. my it wasn't, money. It wasn't your money. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to produce a show. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about backgrounds in the business. And, and I'll go right uh, right to left or left to right or whatever way. It's a Jewish right show. Go right to left. You started um, in the business as a, as a social director in the Catskills, Absolutely. Right? Homowack Lodge in Spring Glen, New York. That was my first job. And uh, uh, I used to get up in the morning. We had a... For those of you who don't know what social directors do in the mountains, you get up, have breakfast with the people, then you're in charge of the activities all day. Like after breakfast, we had an old teepee that we put in the woods about a half a mile away. So I would lead a mar I would tell people that we were going to the wonderful old Homoac Indian village, <laughs> the remnants of and I would take 200 people a half a mile. We get there, there was one tent with a sign, sorry, we moved to Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> and these people wanted to kill me till I got back to the hotel. <laughs> they thought they were gonna see Indian artifacts and things. So and that was so that and then lunch came and after lunch you uh, you you may have got together the softball game. And then there was a very famous sport in the Catskill Mountains called Simon Says. It was originated by a fellow named Lou Goldstein up at Grossinger's. And Simon Says became the aerobics of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Simon Says, put your hands up, put your hands down. If you didn't say Simon Says, you were out of the game. The people won a key ring, they were thrilled. And more importantly, they got exercise. This was the exercise. Hands up, hands down, hands this way, hands that. But the exercise was at the buffet. Well, <laughs> then they were ready to eat lunch. And that I was played as a social director. My first uh, job at Sunrise Manor up in Ulster Heights. I had a, uh, about 50 people uh, for Simon Says had to give out 32 t-shirts. I didn't give anybody, I didn't get anybody out. I only got 18 people out of <laughs> So you didn't last there that long. No, right? they didn't like me. The honest said, is sunny, this is not the way it game. works. He said, don't play that game anymore. Ma Mal, you, yes. you were up in the mountains. Yes, the I was. Right, and uh, after you realized that that wasn't going to become a full-time job. Then no, what? it wasn't a full-time job, but I knew that you started, that you had to start somewhere. Right. I was in the Army. I never did show business before. I was in the Army. I used to do uh, shows in the Army. I remembered everybody's routine. Tell him your first My first was on the Ed Sullivan show in the uh, all army uh, first really? all army show he ever had. But after that, it had to be all downhill, right? <laughs> uh, it's been downhill ever since. But uh, thank God for that one you show. You all remember that one the time. Andrea Doria, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yeah. They just raised it. Just and raised uh, it. then I would start to work, and then I, I've always made a living in this business. Uh, Dick went into the nightclub business. I was in what they call the club date business. And it was one-nighters. It was a lot of one-nighters. You can do four in one hotel on a Saturday night. Yeah, you, you had a reputation for being able to do uh, I was that, four uh, night I was that guy, right. I would go from one to the other, one to the other. Then I was starting to work nightclubs. And then in 64, I toured with Tony Bennett. And then I was on my way in the Copacabana. And then I was the first one from the mountains to work Las Vegas. And uh, I think I was the first one to be signed on the strip to a Sumo Corporation. And, and then, Almost you the whole 70s. How many, uh, years? It was a few years there. Right? I had uh, eight years. Did you wow. ever meet Howard Hughes? No, only his fingernails. They oh, showed me his <laughs> clippings. <laughs> he showed you his clippings. <laughs> but uh, I've I've had a one, and I don't have that thing about being an opening act at all. I don't I don't call myself Zippy the Chimp. I'm an actor. And I, if the if the headliner can follow me, God bless him. If he can't follow me, it's just in trouble for him. But if, if I, I never a considered I myself. That I wouldn't want to follow you. you I don't blame him. You can't him. follow him. Your man is strong. Too, too strong. Louise, you have uh, one of the more interesting stories about how you got started because uh, you came to show business rather, I don't want to say late in life because <laughs> we're the same age. When she uh, was seven. But when she, yeah. you, yes. you were a, a housewife and a mother and, right. and entertained the ladies in the neighborhood. That's it. Uh, with, with impressions right. until your now ex-husband 
bet you what, fifty dollars that you didn't have the guts to get up on stage at, at, on an right. open mic night. Still and owes I, it a fifty. He still owes it a fifty. We still give her fifty bucks a night to get on stage. <laughs> <laughs> she and Dick have a lot in common. They're both paying alimony. Yeah, right? yeah isn't that interesting? That is really. funny. Uh, but Joan London's I, I do. That's my impression of Joan London. It's paying alimony. <laughs> Signing a check. But when he bet me the fifty bucks, I did it as a joke. I went down to the comedy store and open mic night. And thinking nothing of it, got up on stage, and Star Search Scouts happened to be in the audience. So they put me on the show, and Donna Summer saw the show, and she called me and asked me to be her opening act. And you went to Lake Tahoe, threw up before the first oh, show. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> during, the, oh, during the It first was show. the most horrifying experience of my life. I was never so, I can never, to this day, I've never been as scared. Was it Harris? It was Harris, Harris in Lake Tahoe, yeah. yeah. When I worked there, the audience threw up. <laughs> <laughs> but from there, you went. You, you you ended up getting your own Showtime special. I did a lot of television. Uh, that led on to Marty more television. Marty Sid Marty Croft, Sid Marty DC Croft. Follies. I did for right. three years. I did a Saturday Night Live kind of show called Off the Wall right. for two years. I did a lot of cartoon voices. Rodeo Drive. Hosted a game show, Rodeo Drive. Did um, Hollywood Squares. So, my, so I worked a lot in television too. But then I would go on the road with Donna. But I never really worked on my act every night. Mm -hmm. Until we got to Broadway, it was the first time I had ever worked every single night. So it was great. So over you know the months of working, now I'm like learning a little. Now I understand how these guys work. It's like those years of being seasoned. You know, you learn how to deliver a joke. I'm still, I'm still like feel like a babe. You, you know. You're doing a fine job. We've got to wrap it up. But I, before we go, and I have to ask Louise to do this because it's one of my favorite lines. Louise came up with a bit in which she casts Katherine Hepburn <laughs> as a stand-up comic. And how does Katherine open her show? And two Jews walk into a bar. Bum, bum. <laughs> I love it. I did. You gotta love it. You got How to does that joke it. end? I don't know the rest of it, but I love the beginning. Don't <laughs> you? Freddie Roman, Dick Capri, Louise Duarte, and Malzi Lawrence yes. continue success Thank here you, at Harris with Catskills on Broadway. Thanks, we're delighted David. to be here, and the Thank ship you. is now finished. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> this is where we're going to end up, ladies and gentlemen, on a pier yes. with rusty <laughs> clam boats. The lady Susan here is unloading her cargo. Anyway, we'll be back with our calendar segment right after this. What are you gonna order? You wanna share something? Why don't we split something? I'll have a half of yours, you'll have a half of mine, a half here, a half there, because I couldn't eat a whole one. <laughs> now the waiter comes over, he doesn't know you don't know what you want. Yes, what would you like? Waiter, I, I don't eat like this at home. I don't, I don't eat like this. And she's sitting on two chairs while she's saying. Oh, I don't know, waiter, maybe a little tuna side dish, just a little side of tuna ball I'll pick. I'll just have a little something. Uh, chopped egg with the onion, bring one of those too, a little side dish, just a ball. I'll have a little uh, eggplant, chop an eggplant, chop a herring, chop a rubber tire, chop whatever you have there. Yes, uh, make a nice setup on the table. Get a, a big lazy Susan out here, a big lazy Susan, and get an ox to walk around the table to pull, to pull the table with this well, if you're coming into Atlantic City next week and you can take a cruise on the Harris Bell, just come on over to Harris and, and buy a ticket and uh, get a sightseeing tour of the Inland and Waterway. And then go see Broadway. Catskills on Broadway. And then after you see Catskills on Broadway uh, next weekend, you can catch Kenny Rogers. He'll be over at Trump Plaza August 4th through the 8th. The first Doing two nights. All his Jewish songs. All of his Jewish songs. The 4th through the 8th. The first two nights will be in the Convention Center Ballroom. The last uh, three nights will be in the Trump Plaza Theater. At Caesars, The Magic of David Copperfield, August 5th through the 10th. Trop World on stage. Uh, Broadway and TV star Nell Carter teaming up with the original Fifth Dimension. And down at the Grand, formerly Bally's Grand, it's the soulful sounds of Gladys Knight without her pips. I'm uh, David Spatz. She not bring her pips. Pips. She's pipless, what can I tell you? I'm David Spatz. For all of us here at the show and this wacky crew, thanks so much for being with us, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> the David Spatz Show has been brought to you by Merv Griffin's Resorts, Atlantic City's number one casino hotel. Uh, it's great to go away to the Catskills. How can you not love it? And to go away for a weekend to the Catskills, you got to pack to go away. Ah, uh, that's the fun of the weekend. Packing between a man and a woman, the joy, the happiness, the, the friction, the animosity, the hatred, the things that two people wanted to say to each other for months now comes pouring out of our mouths, but we never say them to each other. Men usually talk into a drawer. I ask you, do I need this? He's talking to cufflinks in a drawer. 
Men hate to pack. Men, when it comes time for packing to go away, we just slip into a coma. We, we just follow her all over the house, watching this woman working, going, doing it. And women choreograph it. Women just dance around the house. They can't wait to go. Every light is on. Every drawer is open.